Here we have an Asus ROG Strix RTX 3080, 10 gigs, video card that came in for no power. Let's read what the customer wrote. PC stopped powering up, pulled PSU and GPU out, powered up the PSU with only the GPU connected and the PSU fails to power up. Connected everything except GPU and the PSU powers up normally and everything else works. Thinking the GPU has a short that the PSU is detecting. Please help. So the computer is not even powering up with the GPU connected. That's a very clear indication of a short circuit. Let's see what's going on. Right now, what we're going to do is put the meter in continuity mode and we're going to measure, we're going to start by measuring the 12 volt lines. We have three of them and we're going to measure at the coils. Coil number one, coil number two and coil number three. And then we can quickly go over the other coils and we can measure 12 volts and 3.3 volts from the bottom here. And we'll see if we have a short anywhere on the board. It's not safe to plug the card and turn it on if a short exists. So before we plug it in, let's see what's going on. We're going to start by measuring at the coil here, meter in count 20 mode. And we do not have a short. We have a 447 ohm reading. And that's good. Let's measure at coil number two. You may hear an initial beep, but right now the reading is 440 ohms. Okay, and then we're going to go to coil number three for the third 12 volt line. And let's measure right here. Oh, and we have a short. We have a dead short, zero ohms. Okay, if we measure this one, we have 440 ohms. And if we measure that one, we have 446 ohms. So we have a short. So right now it's not safe to plug this in and power it up because we do have a short on the 12 volt line. What if we measure rest of the coils and see if we have a short? 314, this one is good. And if we measure this one here, 374, that one is good. And finally, we're going to measure this one down here, all the way on the bottom left. And we have 480 reading. Now let's measure at the slot down here. 479. And we have 507. So the only short that we have is the one on the third coil, right over here. Okay. Where is the short coming from? That's the question. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to inject voltage at the shorted coil, and then we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot. We're going to start with maybe 1.2 volts. All right, let's go ahead and inject voltage at the coil right here. You see we have one coil, two, and three. One, two, three. So we're going to inject voltage here at the third one. And when we do inject voltage, what do we see? I see 2.3 amps being drawn, but nothing obvious on the board. Let me bump up voltage to 1.4 and see if anything changes. Oh, I see it. Watch this. One, two, three. And what do you see? right here. I see a heat spot right over here. Let's do it one more time. One, two, and three. Right there. I see a heat spot right at where the current sense resistors are. A current sense resistor usually does not cause a heat spot. But let's see what's going on in this area. I see two current sense resistors right here, and that's where heat is coming from. Let me quickly measure those current sense resistors, and we should get a reading of zero. The meter should not read, let's say, 5 ohms or 10 ohms or a higher number. We should get a reading of zero, so meter in ohms mode. And if we measure here... we have zero. And if we measure here, we have zero. If we go to CON20 mode, 
so we can hear the beep. So we are good here. What if the problem is this capacitor? Let's measure this capacitor in continuity mode. And we do have a short. What if we put one probe on ground on one of the connectors and one probe here, zero ohms and zero ohms. So let's go to diode mode. Measure here, zero and zero. Wow. One way to find out, we're going to have to remove this capacitor and see if that will release our short. Nothing is guaranteed yet, but it's a suspect. A current sense resistor will not cause a short, but a cap, because one end of the cap is connecting to ground and caps fail all the time. All the time. It doesn't matter if it's a laptop or TV. Let's put it on the side. And now we can measure. Why don't we start by measuring the cap just for suspense? And the cap is measuring good actually. So our short is not coming from the cap. Our short is not coming from the cap. Okay, so where is the short coming from? What if we inject voltage at either side of the cap? Oh, wait a minute, I see something. I see something. See it? Somewhere right over here. Watch this area, okay? One, two, and three. Look at this. Look at this. I see it. Right now, I'm injecting voltage at the coil, which is on the right, and we do have MOSFETs on the right side, right here. But we also have MOSFETs on the left side. And right now, if we inject voltage at the shorted coil, like now, one, two, three, look at what's happening. On the left side, you see that tiny heat spot? Somewhere right over here. Okay, watch. One, two, and three. See it? All right. We got it. Got it. Got it. Right over here. It's this guy right here. All right, so the thermal camera is pointing to this MOSFET right here. You can see the scratch marks because I was pointing to that MOSFET with my tweezer. Let me quickly show you what I did. I injected voltage at the shorted coil right here, and we got something on this side that got hot. That thing that got hot is a MOSFET, and the MOSFET is labeled by the scratches that I put onto it with my tweezers. This one here. So that's most likely what's causing the short. Let's go ahead and remove this MOSFET and see if that will release our short. And I'm actually glad the short is coming from left side of the board and not the right side because on the right we have a lot of aluminum capacitors. And you do not want to apply a lot of heat next to aluminum capacitors. All right, so this MOSFET is out. And let's see if we still have a short. Let's see if we still have a short. Moment of truth. Let's see. Do we still have a short? One, two. Yes, no short. The short is gone. Wow. The short is gone. And if we measure at the cap on top here, 
the short is gone. Wow, we did it. We did it. I'm going to put that cap back. We're going to replace the chip. And we'll test. We'll see. Okay, man. Sure. I'll see you. Take care. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so we're going to be using this cheap headset here. I do not know what happened to the microphone. UPS guy came in. I jumped up to give him the boxes. I came back, and the microphone is not working, which is this one here. And that's the Elite Core microphone, about $250. It appears that the problem is the cable, because I tried another similar microphone that we have here that has a static sound, and that's why I stopped using it. So what I did is I got the old one, I tried it, and still no microphone. So I know the problem is the cable and not the microphone. I'm going to order a cable today from Amazon, and hopefully we get it by tomorrow. But for the meantime, bear with me with this cheap headset. What can you do, right? And let's finish the video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to replace the shorted MOSFET. And we're going to put back the capacitor that we removed. And we'll test. The card should work. And let's see how the fume extractor is going to do with this microphone. You can tell the difference between this cheap headset and between the microphone that I use. Huge difference, probably. I did not hear myself using this microphone yet, but we'll find out. Who knows, I may sound like a goat with this microphone, but what can you do? Right? So this whole top row is connecting as one. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to solder a replacement MOSFET. Let's apply heat. I'm using 500 degrees, 1200 watt station. It's very difficult to do this job using a 1000 watt hot air station. And that's why I stopped using my old quick station. And honestly I should do a video on hot air stations. I have a couple of them here. But I need time. The MOSFET is soldered on perfectly. And is my microphone working? Yes. And better than factory. All right, let's see. Moment of truth. Turn the power supply on. 
and the fan on the power supply is spinning we do not hear six beeps which is good not yet yes yes it's working it's working I do have a boot up disk here so it's temporary booting up to this boot up disk that we have plugged in the USB port but right now we do not have the heatsink on so the card is not gonna last booting up to the operating system because it's gonna get very hot and it's gonna shut itself down why don't we install the heatsink just for the time being it doesn't have to be perfect but at least we have some type of heatsink that will dissipate heat all right let's do this we do not need to connect the fans just the heatsink is enough for now and Big Boss can reassemble this one tomorrow he'll do a benchmark on it for the time being we can boot up to this operating system on the flash drive and see how it goes all right let's plug the HDMI cable and HDMI cable is plugged in and let's see the logo and Windows logo and that's the boot up disk it's not Windows but it's a recovery tool it has a graphical interface just like Windows and I'm pressing down on the heatsink the fans are not connected it doesn't matter for now and we are currently booting up from flash drive so it's not an SSD and uh, right there all right we're all good let me shut this off <laughs> and we did it the card is fixed and we're gonna invoice and mail this back to the customer before I end the video I do want to mention that we have a new forum up on our website I did mention it yesterday on our YouTube channel on the community section of YouTube and also on our Facebook the forum is made out of seven sections repair questions tools and equipment micro soldering pre-sales and service questions identify a component if you do not know what that certain component is or you are looking for a specific component and do not know what the value is you can post it here general discussions and looking for work if you are skilled maybe you specialize in fixing GPUs or data recovery or whatever the case may be just post your information here we may need your help or somebody else may be looking for a technician they can look in this section of the forum I'm gonna try to be active on the forum on daily basis I'll try to free some time to answer your questions so just log in to northridgefix.com click on forum on the top here and you will be taken to this page I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video <laughs>